<laughs> Greetings, viewers. I am Eric the Car Guy with, state your name. Brian. Brian. It's just Brian. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Please enjoy this digital cake, and I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. But anyway, Brian, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. And why is Brian here? Well, you see that Acura Vigor behind me? Look familiar? Used to be mine. I sold it to Brian along with the blue Acura Vigor, and he came in today for an oil change and to shoot a, well, help me shoot another video that I did today. And I figured, well, hey, I'm sure people wonder uh, what the life of the Acura Vigor has been since it left the shop, and I thought Brian could shed some light on that. So, Brian, how has your life with the Acura Vigor been? And it's okay, don't hold back <laughs> since, well, you, since you bought it. Start off a little rocky, but uh, it's doing great right now. Um, so the timing of you putting these Two Vigors up for sale, it couldn't have been better. Um, I was in the process of looking for a third vehicle uh, when you posted the videos. So um, when I saw that, I sent you an email right away and I worked right down the road. So it was very convenient for me to come down and look at them. Um, liked what I saw. I mean, uh, the red one was pretty much ready to go uh, other than needing some belts and... Um... Oh, well, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, because we're going to let him know exactly what happened after this car left. Like from the moment you yeah, picked it up. Yeah, it, so. It... So, yeah, so I knew it needed some, some belts, you know, timing belt, water pump. Which um, I gave you. I gave you all the stuff for the timing belt, water yeah, pump, and was... also uh, distributor cap, rotor, oil filter. Yeah. All the stuff that I wasn't going to do to the car, but I gave you all the parts so that you could. Absolutely. I had a big box full, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and other than that, it had uh, a miss at idle that I think you'd mentioned in a video. Yeah, before. it was it was getting weird. So, what would happen was... is. It was only at idle, so you'd be sitting at idle, and the car would idle fine, but then every once in a while it'd just be a like, doop, uh, doop, and it would just do that. So it wasn't necessarily debilitating, but it was certainly concerning. Yeah. You know, over time, you know, kind of wanted to know what was causing that, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. So, I mean, other than those two things, you know, um, I was, you know, happy to purchase it, and uh, so, uh, you know, I agreed to buy both vehicles. Um, couple days maybe two three days passed I came to pick it up as I'm pulling out of the dry, uh, parking lot here I noticed I'm like uh oh no power steering so I uh, drove it home um, I think as soon as I got home I sent you a text I'm like yeah so just put a pin in that for a second okay. so yes I sold him the car and no sooner did he even try to drive it away from the shop there's already a problem it's got no power steering basically is, is what you're saying so yeah. he had he drove it away from here having no power steering and you know I don't know if I'm cursed or what but you might remember that Acura RL that uh, was sold to a friend of mine she got not far away and she was having issues with that car although the guy that bought the Legend 6 speed he didn't have any problems at all he loved that freaking car but you unfortunately had no power steering from the point yeah. you pulled out go on yeah Sorry. so um, I sent you a text you said uh, Maybe try the power steering speed sensor, uh, you know, yeah. just swap them out with the blue car. Um, I tried that. And that, and just to let you in, there is a mechanical speed sensor on these old Hondas that's actually stuck in the differential on the top of this car that controls how much power steering the car has. So at speed as you're driving down the road, the power steering is actually cut off. The only time you really need power steering is when you're at slow speeds and you're parking. And so Honda used this mechanical speed sensor you know, in this instance, and I thought, well, maybe there's a problem with that speed sensor. It's an easy swap out, if you will. Well, easiest, one of the easiest things to do. I thought, okay, well, maybe that's a problem because I swear to you, when I drove it out there and I parked it, it was fine. Yeah. And I don't, you know, maybe it missed me or whatever. <laughs> anyway, you no, tried the uh, it didn't miss me you know, <laughs> when I came to look at it. It had power steering, so you know, I don't know what happened. But uh, tried the, the speed sensor, that didn't fix it, so um, I decided to take it to a local shop um, and uh, they said power steering pump, you know, I ran it by you, said yeah, that's probably what I would, you know. Uh, it's easier than a rack. Right. There's yeah. really there's really only two other components. There's yeah. the power steering pump, the rack, and the lines in between, so mm -hmm. if without any leaks, I would, the first thing I would try is the pump. So we went ahead and uh, put a new uh, pump in and he called me up two days later and was like, Still no power steering, you know, nothing really made sense. You know, I didn't want to replace the rack. You know, I didn't want to just start throwing a bunch of money. And I was pretty bummed. So, but I decided, uh, well, I was planning on taking it to Scott Armstrong, a guy you, you know, recommended Armstrong Automotive um, here locally. And uh, uh, I was going to take it to him. He was going to do the timing belt and the, 
you know, water pump anyway, so I figure I'll have him look at it, get his opinion. I took it to him, and he's like, the only thing that makes sense is the pump. You know, I'm like, he's like, I know you just replaced it, but, you know, that's what I would do. So um, once he started digging into it, he noticed a cracked pulley. Um, you know, he said the pump definitely... The power steering pulley was cracked. Yeah. So... Um, it wasn't cracked when it left here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there might have been an insulation issue. The, the pump definitely wasn't working. We decided to just take the pump out of the blue uh, parts car, and uh, uh, he also replaced the reservoir, but that, that did it. I had power steering. I'm like, yay, I got a car. <laughs> We're all like, yay, because yeah. me, I'm thinking, I just sold this guy a car, yeah. and now he's got no power steering. I'm like, uh. <laughs> and I'm sure somebody's out there, you know, ready to type, Eric, how come you weren't working on the car? Well, at that time, I just got in the 08 Acura TL, and I was working on that, trying to get that going and shooting videos with all that stuff. So I didn't need necessarily have to lift. or it, That thing was on the lift for a few days, weeks, things like that. You needed the car. You needed to go. That's why I referred him to my friend Scott Armstrong, who you have seen in other videos that I've done, who worked at the other Acura dealership in town, who I worked with for a short time. If I wasn't able to work on my own cars, I'd send my stuff to him, which is why I sent Brian over that way. All right, power steering. So I got, got power steering that. while yeah. he had it up. I had him go yeah. ahead and do, uh, well, I wanted to figure out what was that, that uh, miss at idle, you know, and yeah. I had the box of parts that said, go ahead and do the, the, the tune-up, um, mm -hmm. the, the plugs, wires, the distributor cap and rotor, um, did it, you know, still had the uh, miss, so we're like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll drive it as is, um, you know, for a few weeks and, you know, maybe bring it back to you. Probably should have done the timing belt and water pump then, but I was just ready. I was excited to get it out and drive it. I think he was ready. For to the get first it, time with power out. steering. To yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, like I said, I took it, you know, drove it back to work, uh, to work and back for a few weeks, um, called Scott. Uh, oh, so I noticed at, uh, over that period of time, it seemed like the miss was more frequent. Um, Getting worse. Yes. So um, I called Scott up. I take that back. Scott called me, uh, which I think says a lot about Scott, you know, and how he uh, treats his customers. He uh, called me and wanted to know how the car was running. So I, I told him about the, the miss. And uh, so I brought it back. I don't think I mentioned uh, you, and I think in a previous video where you mentioned it was it was missing, it had a miss at idle that you thought it might be a camshaft position sensor. So possibly, and when I was I had all the parts to do the timing belt and water pump. I thought while I was in there, maybe I'd look at it, check it out, because if the cam's sending a weird signal, and these these older cars like this don't necessarily have their. Maybe the best way to say it is it's not smart enough to really pick up an anomaly like that, so it won't necessarily set a code for a cam sensor. But actually what I was thinking more than anything else is that timing belt being so old, it might have had enough slack in it to where the cam was moving around like this, what I call chunking. So instead of having a smooth rotation of the camshaft, as the cam rotates, the valve springs are pushing against the cam lobe. So once it gets past a certain cam lobe, it pushes like this. And if there's slack in the belt, there's no smooth movement of the camshaft. And I was wondering if that was sort of upsetting because it was only happening at idle. As you're driving down the road at speed, you know, things are moving and they're moving a lot smoother. So I was just curious if, if a loose timing belt would possibly cause the cam sensor to freak out or, or a lot of times when you take the uh, upper pulleys off of these, there's some kind of wax or something inside that cam sensor, and over time it tends to melt out. I didn't know if, if that was an issue. I, I rarely see problems with cam sensors on these. I was thinking more like loose timing belt might have been contributing, and I was going to look at it when I went into the timing belt, which I never did. So really, I was just hoping to lay eyes on it. Cam sensor was kind of a, hey, let's, let's see, but yeah. I didn't know for sure. Yeah. if that was the actual cause, but I'm sorry, go on. No, so that's, that's basically, you know, I knew he was going to be in there doing the timing belt and water pump, so we might as well have that, you know, replace that too. So uh, um, rather than take it off the blue car, I actually got on uh, a Facebook group, Acura Vigor Club, and I sourced a, a, a cam position sensor um, from a guy there that just came off a you know, car that was running, so I was pretty confident I had a good part here. and. Uh, so he did the time belt, the water pump, replaced the sensor, and still had that mess. It didn't improve at all. So his next two items, to, you know, was either idle air control valve or an alternator. He felt like it was one of the two. So. Yeah, we were in communication about mm -hmm. that behind the scenes, and, and Scott and I were sort of going back and forth, and I was like, you know what? My guess is for an idle air control valve, because I have seen some of these older ones, they've, they've got a screen that 
is in the air inlet and sometimes that screen gets clogged up. It's just, I've never seen one cause a miss like that though. But to me, the, easy, the idle air control valve is right on the top of the intake and on the side of the engine. Pretty easy to change, just the coolant lines are a little fiddly, but um, you know, seemed like the easiest thing to go for, which right. did he replace it or? No, so I was sort of leaning towards that because like you said, it was the easiest, you know, it seemed like the easiest thing. We had the parts car, I could have just took one off that. He was a little concerned about the hoses though, you know, older hoses. But um, I, like I slept on it. I did some more reading on that Facebook group uh, and I found a couple people that had similar symptoms and replacing the alternator fixed it. So we're like, well, he was already, you know, leaning toward one or the other, let's go with the alternator. So uh, put a new alternator in and it, it's good to go. So why would the alternator affect the idle? Well, an alternator, produces a, an AC current to start with. In other words, there's a positive and a negative side to the electricity that's initially coming out of the alternator. So they use something that's called a bridge rectifier, which is a series of diodes that takes that AC and turns it into the DC that the car needs. So the DC, or the car just wants to see regular voltage going in one direction, where the bridge rectifier is, is supposed to take care of that. So in essence, what I believe happened is one of those diodes in that bridge rectifier was going bad or something like that. And diodes only allow electron flow in one direction. So it's kind of like a gatekeeper. So what I feel was possibly happening is one of those diodes was shorting out, allowing AC current out into the system, which freaked the car out a little bit for an instant during an idle situation. It was kind of weirdly intermittent also. Yeah, yeah. So that's why the alternator was gonna solve that problem is because, that, like I said, that bridge rectifier, that, and, and that diode inside that alternator was probably going bad causing that. I didn't even think about it. Thought didn't even cross my mind until Scott had said to me, you know, it was like, hey, you know, but, all right, so you've replaced a power steering pump, which now you've got power steering. The alternator fixed the idle part of it. Any other issues that you've? I don't know. Since then, um, I've been driving it to and from work, put about 2,000 miles on it, and I've had zero issues. Nice. I'm loving it. Nice. So there was the initial, I'm sorry about that, the problems that you had to deal with. And maybe, maybe my spidey sense was tingling or something like that, and I thought, well, it's time to maybe move on from this car. But more than that, that TL just dropped into my lap out of the sky. And then I said, well, now I definitely have too many vehicles. I need to make some space. And since the TL is basically being used like I used to use the Acura Vigor, it just made sense to me to, to have those move on. And I'm glad you got it, and I'm glad you're enjoying it. And I'm sorry for the issues you had initially, but now it's the car that, that I felt it was. It was very reliable for me. I, I hardly had any issues with it. The biggest issue I had with it was that leak in the trunk when I first got it, which I fixed with that bodywork, which seems to be holding up okay. Um, doesn't seem to be leaking in the trunk anymore, at least no. as far as I know. Um, and you've since sold the blue car yes. after you took the parts yeah, and everything um, off of it. Maybe I'll regret that down the road, but I just didn't have a place to store right. it. Store it so. And the idea of the blue car, at least in my mind, it was a running car with a, a distributor cap and rotor because it did have a bad distributor cap, which was shorting out and not allowing the car to start. I actually verified this before you came out because I wanted to make sure that it was running. Uh, but that being said, uh, I'd already taken the exhaust off of the blue car and put it on this car, so the blue car was already loud. The blue car was also a manual, but mainly I wanted you to have that in case you needed parts, because as you've already found out, parts for this car are right. virtually unobtainable yes. now. So. Yeah. yeah, so that might be a challenge down the road, but uh, you know, um, my son just turned 15 last week, so um, this might be the vehicle he learns to drive in, and, yeah. and if he wants, it might be his first vehicle. So, you know, I'm hoping, you know, I get, I get, you know, another, it's got a hundred, I think it's not quite 150,000 miles, 150, so, yeah. you know, I'm hoping it'll last another 150,000. I suspect it will. Yeah. I mean, it was, before I got the car, it, I serviced it at the dealer. It was actually a well-maintained car. It's just some circumstances or whatever happened in that family. The car got parked for a period of time, I think under a pine tree, so it just sort of sat for a time before I bought it. And then I bought it, brought it back up, and drove it for a time, so low mileage, yes, but well maintained in those miles and thankfully for that. But honestly, the Acura Vigor for me didn't have a whole lot of issues other than uh, front coil springs would break quite often on them, on the older ones, but I've already put new struts, Acura struts on the front of this and the coil springs were fine. Um, I think some bushings are starting to show their age and I think I also found a uh, power steering rack boot that you know was 
kind of gone, but the power steering rack works fine. Uh, so a few minor issues with a car that's this old and like that, but I, you know, I especially think with these tires that are on it, these missions that are on it, it rode nice, it drove nice, and yes. now that you've taken care of those other issues, I think it'll be a good car for you, and possibly, as you said, something you can pass down to your son at, and when you're done with Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. Anyway, so that's the story of what happened to the Acura Vigor after the fact. But anyway, Brian, thanks for coming by. <laughs> yes, it's a social distancing time of... Not quite six yeah. feet away. But yeah, <laughs> not quite six feet away, but you know, anyway. So if you have automotive questions, AricTheCarGuy.com will be linked in the description along with some other videos that I did with this here Acura Vigor. I tore the entire dash out to replace the blower motor once. That was fun. Anyway, that stuff will be linked down in the description along with a link to ericthecarguy.com. If you have automotive questions, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the world. Brian, thank you for coming by today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time. Brian won't, but I will. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>